I don't just talk about other people's stuff, I also make my own. Books in particular. To date, I have four books you can check out on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and the short story collection Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and Other Genres. Hop on down to the description for Amazon links to all four books. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and I apologize for the change and most likely drop in video quality for this one, but I'm recording this particular primal video on my phone rather than my camera. Long story short, the camera that I've been using to film stuff for this channel for, gosh, it's been 10 years now just about, decided to give up the ghost just yesterday. And I've got a new one incoming. I searched around in stores to try and get one right away. Couldn't find one, so I ordered one online. But for now, the show must go on, so I'm making the best with what I've got. And what I've got is my phone. So, this is what we have for now. And enough about that. Let's get to the new episode of Primal, entitled Vidar. So first and foremost, it's back to the way things were. Uh, after the bizarre leap to 1890 with a complete narrative break in the primal theory, we're back to following Spear, Fang, and Mira as they are setting off for parts unknown, pursued by the Viking chief and his son, I got it right this time, his son, Eldar. And it starts off, well, it starts off the way you'd expect. They are sort of recovering from what happened, because Spear and Fang took quite a beating in that last episode we saw them in. And Mira's helping them recover, but they don't get a chance to be at peace for very long, because the Chieftain and Eldar are right on their tails. And we get a battle at sea for a, a little moment, where we establish that they're actually pretty evenly matched, and then they suddenly are near land. And being near land, that means rocks, that means places the boat probably shouldn't be going. One of the Viking ships gets destroyed, and then for the briefest moment, they are all literally in the same boat, but still trying to kill each other. And they get separated, of course. And after they get separated, because uh, Eldar, who seems to be like the guy that, you, you know that one character that's in every Star Trek series who has something happen to him to really drive home the fact that the something is dangerous going on and yet despite always nearly being on Death Star, he always survives? That's kind of how he felt in this episode. But anyway, once they're away from the Vikings and they finally make it to land, Fang starts spazzing out. And everything about this particular sequence, from the music, to the way it's shot, to the how the characters are behaving, it's the first time that a scene in Primal has felt deliberately lighthearted. But it also confirms something that a lot of you guys have been talking about. Uh, from the moment Episode 2 ended, a lot of you guys were saying that Red most likely got Fang pregnant. Because, I mean, it, the metaphor was pretty obvious. All the visual signs were there. I kept meaning to bring it up and go more in depth at some point, but I just never got around to it because there was always something else in the episode more pressing to discuss. But now, now it's actually a thing. It is 100% confirmed. The reason Fang was spazzing out is because she was looking for just the right spot to, to make a nest. And once Spear realizes what's going on, I mean, like any good husband, he's ecstatic. Yeah, I, I'm saying that in jest. Don't take it too far. <laughs> but he's really happy. This is a genuine moment of happiness in the world of Primal, something we rarely, if ever, get to see. Which, I mean, that added an extra sense of dread to the second half of the episode, but we'll get to that in due time. 
So, while Spear, Fang, and Mira are preparing for the miracle of life, the Chieftain and Eldar just barely have survived their encounter and are now recuperating in their own right. And curiously, we get our first glimpse, in series at least, of that weird demon thing. But actually, this the moment leading up to it really stuck out to me. Because there's this brief moment where the chieftain is sitting by the fire that they built, and there's one shot, it only lasts for a few seconds, but there's a shot of him just staring into the fire, and his eyes look really creepy. Like, the whites are black, his pupils are yellow, he looks possessed. It is a really eerie image. Air conditioner just kicked in. I don't have a lapel mic because I can't hook it up to the phone, sorry. I hope it's not interfering with the sound too much. But anyway, really creepy shot. And then the demon shows up, whatever that thing is. And it turns out to just be a dream, but clearly it's not just a dream. Like, clearly this thing has plans for the chieftain, which, uh, which paints a certain... Uh, the, okay, let me regroup from that. The fact that this demon clearly has a plan and cl is clearly, like, observing the Viking chieftain in particular might explain something that happens at the end, something that's kind of inexplicable, but could be explicable if we take the clues into account, but we'll get to that in due time. Anyway, getting back to our primary protagonists, Fang gives birth, and I'm actually kind of surprised that they actually showed the process. It wasn't just like they're showing Fang's reactions and then suddenly, oh look, there's an egg in the nest. We actually get to see it come out, which I wasn't expecting. I mean, this show does show a lot of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise see on TV, but, you know, wasn't expecting to get a nice, clear camera shot of a dinosaur laying an egg. And yet here we are. It's National Geographic stuff. It's not that disgusting, really. But it's actually a kind of an interesting way they frame it, because, like, it it's framed as a good moment. Again, this is one of those rare times where Spear and Fang and Mira, of course, because she's been a slave for so long, one of those rare times where they've actually caught a break and they're able to just be at peace for a little bit. And not only are they not killing, they are making new life. They're bringing new life into the world. At least, at least they're incubating it. The eggs haven't hatched yet. They've only just been laid. But it's, it's a nice change of pace for them. And, of course, Spears acting ecstatic, like... Even though he knows he's not the father, he knows it's Red, but he he may as well just be the adoptive father at this point. And he's really happy. He wants to be part of this. He is so happy for Fang. It's, it's almost adorable to watch. And, of course, when he tries getting too close to the eggs, Fang goes full Mama T-Rex and basically tells him to back the heck off. In one of those rare moments that actually made me laugh out loud in this series. It's a nice moment until it gets violent again, which this being primal, it always does. The Vikings have figured out something that could give them an advantage. They managed to uh, lasso and break these giant buzzard creatures. Maybe they're supposed to be teratorns, or maybe they're just big vultures like you might see in any monster movie. But either way, they've got them. They're flying around. Kind of gives me vibes from War Eagles, which is a book I reviewed for Kaiju Lit Circle. And, you know, it's actually just occurring to me, this is a very metal episode. It's got Vikings. It's got battles. It's got giant birds. It's got dinosaurs. It's got spears and swords and axes. Like, seriously, 
how is there not a power metal album based on this series yet? Am on Amarth, maybe they can write a song about this show. I don't know, but I mean, I'm getting sidetracked by that. Thing is, they're they're not done. They still want their revenge, and I still have a lot to say about the topic of revenge and whatnot when it comes to Primal. But I'm saving that for its own video when I have my camera properly brought back. But. Either way, we've got a new battle to deal with, and that's where things get really harrowing. Here's the thing about Primal. It knows how to punch you in the gut. And it's rare for the characters to come out unscathed. From the first episode, I mean, the first episode is all about Spear and Fang losing their families. Children died in that first episode. If the show is willing to go that far, then nobody is safe. About the only people you figure are safe at this point would be Spear and Fang, because they are the two main characters. But even they're not going to come out of it without some scars. Mira, though, she's not necessarily safe, nor are those eggs. Which meant the battle in which the Chief and Eldar come in for their last grand stand against these three really did have me on edge. Because I figured, uh, the after seeing them bond for a little bit, they are more sympathetic than any other antagonists we've seen. But I still don't really want them to win, of course, because they're just out to get revenge after all. Revenge isn't going to do anything. And... I don't want them to kill the characters that I've gotten attached to. And that's why I was nervous during that final battle, because there are only three outcomes I could think of. Either both of the Vikings get taken down. That's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that something happens to those eggs. And possibility number three is that something happens to Mira. And I, like I said... After watching every episode up to this point, I would not put it past this show to take options two or three if it really wanted to. The potential is still there that it could at some point in the future. Thankfully, it didn't happen, but that doesn't mean seeing the Chief and Eldar beaten is necessarily the best feeling. Like, yes, we're still happy that... Fang's eggs are safe, Mira is safe, everybody that Spear cares about is still alive at the end. And that smile on his face is... that says it all, really. But at the same time, of course, I mean, the Chief and Eldar are father and son. That's a really special bond, especially in Viking culture. And Eldar dies, of course. I mean, I don't think we really expected the Vikings to stop unless they were killed. But, you know, it, it, it was inevitable. It's still hard to see. It's still hard to see that moment at the end where the chief sees his son's body and he's like... Sorry, just ghosts again. Anyway, he sees his son's body and he's like... There's just this look of despair on his face, like now he really has lost everything. And he's like waist deep in the water, hanging onto the rock his son landed on. And then he just lets go and allows himself to be taken away. It, it is kind of heartbreaking. It's a reminder of why, even though we love to see villains that are just plain evil, it's still good to have some sympathetic villains thrown into the mix. Yeah, my heart does go out to him, of course. Yes, he's a murderous Viking. Yes, he enslaved people. But he lost his entire family. I mean, come on. Y you can't say he it's not understandable. And yet, the real surprise is that he's still alive. Or at least he lived long enough to actually see that. He takes quite a fall beforehand... And like Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, he hits everything on the way down. And like, his head cracks on a rock when he finally comes to a halt. 
And I was like, okay, he's done. I guess we're going to be following Elgar from now on. But then suddenly he gets back up. And I was like, he, he survived that? How? What? That doesn't make any sense. Until we remember there's that demon guy. A demon that is already probably eking its way into his mind. That's my theory right now, that the demon might actually be keeping him alive. He might not realize it yet, because I, I don't think he actually is dead at the end. Even though he's let himself go, he's just going to let the river swallow him up. Which, of course, would in other, any other circumstance, that would mean he would be dead. But I don't think we've seen the last of him. Looking back at the shot of the giant demon on the throne in the trailer, I'm pretty sure the little figure down at the bottom is the chieftain. At least I am now. But we'll see what actually happens. Uh, maybe that scene is him really dying and he winds up in hell or something. Who knows? And it could be hell with two L's or hell with one L, because it's the underworld either way. But anyway, I, clearly we haven't seen the last of him. I am certain of that. Still, if it were the last we saw of him, this would be an appropriate way for him to go out. But... He's going to come back, I'm pretty sure. Now, whether or not anything else ties in, like the Primal Theory characters, we still don't know at this point. There was no indication that that episode had anything carry over into the main story. It might just have been a random episode just for the heck of it, just to say, let's do something a little different for just one half hour of this series and then get back to the regular one. We will see. Either way, though, we're back to the main story. It was a refreshing return. And I still can't shake the feeling that something bad is going to happen either to Mira or to those eggs, or maybe to Fang by the end. It might be, I'll just put this out there as speculation, I can't rule out the possibility that Fang might die at the end of the series and Spear and Miro will wind up having to raise those baby T-Rexes. At this point, we don't know, like I said. But anyway, that's the long and the short of it for this one. Again, sorry for the drop in quality because I'm filming on a phone, but I will have a new camera by the next episode. Of that, I'm certain. So, thank you for sticking with me on this one. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer signing off. Congratulations, you reached the end. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. Of course, the other way to support us is to go to Amazon and check out our books, Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and other genres. Also, check the description for links to DeviantArt and other platforms we operate. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.